Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 608 of the Juicebox podcast. Today I bring you the 25th installment of the Diabetes Pro Tip series. On this episode, Jenny Smith and I will discuss honeymooning. I know that a honeymoon can be very difficult to navigate, both during it and as it ends. It's difficult for parents of children with type 1 as well as newly diagnosed adults. So today Jenny and I are going to do a deep dive on it, and I think it's going to help you. Please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you're looking for the rest of the Pro Tip series, it's available at diabetesprotip.com, juiceboxpodcast.com, where you can go right into your podcast app right now, hit search, and look for Diabetes Pro Tip. Juice Box Podcast. They should all pop right up, but there's great lists on the website. If you're looking for community around type 1 diabetes or diabetes in general, you should really check out the Facebook page for the Juice Box Podcast. It's called Juice Box Podcast Type 1 Diabetes. All you have to do is search for it in your Facebook app, answer a couple of membership questions, and the next thing you know, you'll be in there with like 20,000 people living with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. You can ask questions, make friends, use the space any way that's best suited for you. Just lurk if you want. There's a lot to learn just by looking. Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes on Facebook. I know... I know what you're thinking, Facebook, people are going to argue and complain, it's going to be horrible, but this group really is special. There's not a lot of that going on in there, and I think you'll like it. Just give it a shot. Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. Last thing before we get started, if you have Type 1 Diabetes or you're the caregiver of someone who has Type 1 Diabetes and you're a U.S. resident, in less than 10 minutes, you can take a survey that will help people living with Type 1. It's at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. I've taken the survey myself. It really does just take a few minutes. You can do it from your phone or your laptop or wherever. It is 100% HIPAA compliant and absolutely anonymous. It really does help people living with type one. Give it a look. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Okay, so we're recording. I want to tell you that this uh, lovely woman named Isabel has been helping me with the Facebook page. And she came to me recently and said, you need a pro tip for female hormones and you need a pro tip for the end of a honeymoon. She said, these are things that people ask about constantly and they must not feel like they're getting what they need out of the podcast on this. Now, Jenny, you know, in my heart, the end of the honeymoon just means use more insulin. And when you get your period, it means use more insulin, but darn it, Let's dig into it. <laughs> Let's just dig into it and find out the the the, the details, okay? As a sure. They're, yes, they're, they're both good good topics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The details are apparently what is needed, and I am happy to deliver what is needed. Um, and by that, I mean dig it out of your head and record it so people can hear it. Sure. Okay, because my only experience with honeymooning. <sighs> My only experience that I'm aware of personally with honeymooning, because Arden had diabetes, you know, was diagnosed so long ago, and we had a little meter and some needles. I mean, I didn't really know what was happening in her. So the one thing that I can tell you is that I called my friend who was my children's pediatrician one day, and I've told you this before, but it it, it fits in this, this episode, so let's put it here. And I told him, I prefaced my conversation by saying, I know what I'm about to say is ridiculous, but is there any chance Arden doesn't have diabetes? And he mm-hmm. said, and he sounded sad. I think sad that I asked him. And he, and he said, why? And I said, well, she hasn't needed insulin for about a day and a half now. Right. And that lasted maybe, 
I don't know, 72 hours, and then it was just gone. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my entire personal experience with honeymooning. But I know how difficult it can be for everybody. So, Well, another good question in that, I mean, as you sort of began with, I just give more insulin, right? Well, <laughs> a good piece of honeymoon is, <clears throat> or coming out of honeymoon, right? Yeah. When you're, you've kind of moved through that lack of insulin need, or really, really, some people can get by on just basal insulin. Mm -hmm. They might not need anything for their meals or their blood sugars don't go high enough to correct or anything. Right. Um, but did you notice also that after that, like three ish days that her insulin needs were higher than they were before that? Well, here's the, here's the honest answer. I, I don't know. I didn't know. Right. What, you I don't remember. Know, I, no, no, no. Forget that. I don't remember. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. So like, I think that feeling maybe encapsulates more honeymooning and the, and the leaving of honeymooning for people more than anything. Like, right. So somebody, you or your child gets type one, it's a whirlwind. It's, you know, and if you're honeymooning, insulin needs are changing kind of radically sometimes. So just when you maybe get the nerve to, I don't know, bolus two units of a basil, you know, and then the next day you fight a 60 blood sugar all day that won't go up. And then the next day you think, well, maybe I shouldn't use the two units of basil. And then you don't. And then your body doesn't help that day. And your blood sugar is 300 all day. That uncertainty, I think, is the main characteristic of honeymooning. Don't you? True. And honeymoon is, it is really different person to person, as well as the, like, movement out of honeymooning. Mm -hmm is different person to person. Like you didn't have, Arden didn't have a very long honeymoon right. at all. And that's not uncommon from the studies that have been done. It's not uncommon with kids under the age of five who are diagnosed okay. to have a much more rapid, rapid onset mm. of type one, very quick, very aggressive, really high blood sugars, uh, you know, unless they've been watching for it or they know because of previous antibody testing that it could be coming, you know, DKA, all of those kinds of things. And what that results in is causing enough of the betas to be stressed enough and the body kind of decreasing them enough in, you know, in amount that now diabetes presents itself. Okay. So, but in older kids and especially in adults, there is often a slower progression of type one, like, you know, here it is yeah, um, and all those symptoms. And that often leaves more betas in the picture. Um, also, what's been found is that the sooner you get containment of blood sugars after diagnosis, you give some relief to those beta cells. And because now, you know, you're either injecting or you're pumping insulin. And so that's something that's helping to take care of the blood sugar levels and your betas that do remain can actually help out. And so honeymoon then often comes in, you know, where usually somewhere between about one to four months post-diagnosis is the typical like honeymoon mm -hmm. time to expect that to come into the picture and how long it can last again is person to person. Yeah. It could be a couple months, it could be three days, it could be a year or two that you continue to have this like lack of more typical insulin need. Consistency. Um, it, it's the consistency that you're, that you're missing and, and, yes. and that breaks people's hearts, I think. I, I'll tell you, after interviewing so many people, I've heard, I believe, every variation of time and distance about honeymooning from adults and children and, and crazy stories where blood sugars are suddenly um, – super normal, super out of whack. Uh, one lady, I'll never forget, told me like she thinks her honeymoon lasted years. And then I'm wondering like, is that is that honeymoon or is it a slow onset? Like, is that like, and I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Like what matters is that you're using insulin now and in, there's going to be this variability to how much until things, I guess you could just say settle, but obviously it's not settle. It's until you're beta cells give up, right, right, completely. Do do some people just not see a honeymoon at all? Or, or does it happen and, and they're not aware of it? 
In talking with so many people that I have, um, and, you know, it's always something I ask about is diagnosis if somebody wants to talk about it, you know, um, or if it's been very, very soon after I get to talk or, you know, before I get to talk to them, it's been very close to that time period. And it seems like, again, everybody is a little bit different. I, little people, again, very little people tend to be the ones that I hear the most. We didn't notice very much honeymoon. Okay. Or, you know, parents are concerned because they're like, I don't know. I feel like we never had a honeymoon. I feel like we never needed just like a little bit of insulin. We right. just went from not using any to really using insulin, you know. So functionally, how do people deal with it? So when, you know, let's say I came to you and I said, hey, here's my seven-year-old kid. Uh, yesterday, this basil and this meal ratio worked perfectly. Today, it's a hot mess, and I'm saving low blood sugars all over the place. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but as I look back, this is bouncing around. It's two days of this, one day of that. But how do you find reasonable stability until things get normalized? Well, some of it, again, in that early time period is it's a bit of estimation, Mm -hmm. Um, you can base it on, well, yesterday was a really sensitive day. If it looks like we fought low blood sugars all night and we're entering morning time again today with lower blood sugars yet again, that's a good visual that maybe today needs to be covered similar to yesterday or even less aggressively than yesterday. Right. Yeah. So some hindsight can help, but then, you know, tomorrow morning you wake up high if you didn't do anything strange overnight and you're all of a sudden high, today might be one of those days that you're going to need more insulin. Right. And so it it's hard because it takes out of the picture a lot of the things that we've done in other, we've discussed in other episodes like testing, right? I mean, doing things like basal testing in this time period, it's kind of hard yeah. because you don't really know exactly day to day how things are going to move. Overall, the general idea that kids before puberty once remission or um, has kind of gone away, right? Once that honeymoon period, you're expecting it's over. Insulin needs usually are about 0.7 to one unit per kilogram per day of insulin. Say it again. 0.7 mm -hmm. to one unit per kilogram per day of insulin. Okay. So, and if you don't know pound to kilogram conversion, just take your pound weight and divide it by 2.2 .2, Okay. and you'll have your weight in kilograms, but that's a, it's a, it's a baseline. You know, if you were really, really, really low to begin with, and now you're doing a really low carb diet as well, you may not really see that insulin dosing kind of go along with what we would expect right. in terms of overall insulin need. Right. Yeah. Um, usually people are considered in remission if they're at, you know, 0.5 or less, 0.5 units per kilogram per day or less okay. of insulin. Um, and then, you know, once you get to puberty, gosh, I mean, you could use anywhere between a unit to two units of insulin a day during puberty. And that's completely normal, right. absolutely and completely normal. So if you're not so sensitive anymore, you definitely see these swings in blood sugar, you know, especially in that growth period overnight or in the aftermath of meals and it's lasting and lasting and lasting guarantee you're probably not in honeymoon anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, you, I've said it to you, I've said it to everybody listening. Um, you have to meet the need. And I don't know if right. I'm clear enough about that, but if one day the need is greater, then meet the greater need. And if one day the, the, the need is lesser, then meet the lesser need. And and flexibility is just, it's completely key. It's what you're saying. It's like you have to sort of, I, I don't think that, I don't think that during honeymoon, you want to look real macro, not all the time, right? You want to kind of just deal with diabetes in segments of it of half days or hours or something like that. Like, here's what's happening right now. If it starts trending one way, then adjust with it. If it starts trending the other way, then adjust with it. But I don't think there's a lot of value unless you're matching an apples to apples day and going, well, last Thursday, 
you know, she was really low, so I don't want to be aggressive six days later. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> today's got nothing. There's no. Yeah. Yeah. There's no correlation between now and no. six days ago when you're no. in this honeymoon fluctuation. And I know that people are going to think I'm flipping, but I think you could just retitle this episode, Diabetes Pro Tip Menstruation. And we're, I don't know that we're going to say too many different things when we get to it, which is why maybe for some people, they gloss over it when we talk about you know, these basic ideas of like, it's not always going to be the same all the time. You can't always ask for a cut and dry answer. I mean, if you want to get through a honeymoon period and it's, it's particularly, you know, um, rocky, I think that just staying flexible, meeting the need, you know, taking a little bit of historical knowledge off of days that were similar to the one you're experiencing now, I think that's really the whole thing. I think that's the best that you can do oftentimes, especially in honeymoon. And then even, you know, coming out of honeymoon, there's, I know some people use the word, like it becomes more stable. Okay. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I mean, more stable in the fact that you're not like giving only one unit and that ho- to- takes care of your whole day. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. But or, or, um, yeah, or that one day the unit's necessary and then the next day it's not necessary, but there's consistency. Right. I think they there's more consistency, consistency is, yeah, yeah. is it exactly. And I mean, in honeymoon, again, there are ups, there are downs. Yes, you can, you can choose to use insulin from some hindsight mm-hmm. from again, I know on a really, really busy day like this, my child needs a lot less insulin, but is running high today. Okay. Again, it's the, then meet the need in terms of where the blood sugar is right now. And thankfully these days, um, I mean, you didn't have, and I certainly didn't as a kid have any visible to where my blood sugar was going Mm -hmm. at all. It was a one number. It could be rising in 10 minutes. It could be dropping in 10 minutes. And that's what it was. I wonder sometimes when I'm like, I'm speaking to this person now who's got a very small child who I think still their needs are, well, they're not honeymooning. They were just, they had too much basil going. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know, by using too much basil, they were getting, drops that didn't seem to make sense, right? And so it took a day or two to figure out that the basil was too high to bring it down a little bit. But in there, while we were trying to figure it out, this person was using pens, and so they were relegated to 0.5 units at a time. Right. And I just said, do you have syringes? And she did. So I was like, just eyeball less than a half next time we go for this meal. And did that and fixed a lot of their problems. And so while this kind of unseen force, obviously I'm talking about basil that we needed to fix still, but, you know, let the unseen force be, you know, your pancreas working all of a sudden was dropping her down. The limiting factor was the, was the measurement on this, on the pen. Correct. And and then you, like, for some reason, your brain doesn't jump over that and go, well, this might be too much. What your brain says is this is all I'm able to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, and and so, but the minute we right. dropped down to like these quarter of units, then suddenly there was far fewer spikes in the meals and then far fewer lows afterwards. And I'm just wondering, like during the honeymoon period, if you are that scared of these crazy drops, do you maybe just draw back your basil a little bit? And then on days when that basil's not enough, just increase your meal insulin a little or do you know what I mean? Like, cause also these, these poor people are probably MDI in this moment. Correct. Too. Most yeah. often. And, and like you said, unless they have, you know, half, half unit dosed or marked syringes in which, yes, if you've got a, if you've got good eyes or you have a good magnifying glass, you can get kind of a quarter unit ish yeah, yes. in there, Double whatever times. it might be. Um, I've got a good friend that does just that. And she's done it for a long time and it works great for her. Um, But again, you have to kind of use those microscopic doses and on pens, it's a hard thing to definitely do Mm -hmm. because all you can get is a half a unit. Um, I mean, I, I think on pumps, honestly, in honeymoon, and I know a lot of clinics often don't encourage people to start pumping until honeymoon is expected to be almost over. Um, 
And I, you know, sometimes I agree with that. Sometimes I don't agree with that. I think it kind of is individual in need. You have to look at what people are able to do and kind of a knowledge base of where are you already. Um, But those doses, they do, they do shift and change through honeymoon. And then, you know, going out of honeymoon, you can expect the doses to definitely increase Mm -hmm. your child, your teen, your, you know, adult that you're living with, or your partner to, or whatever, you're going to expect that their doses are going to increase. And while kids are growing at the same time as coming out of honeymoon, there are a lot of factors there. Um, Another piece in the mix that often shifts things to higher insulin, and we've talked about it before we talked about illness and management, is that if a child is also sick within honeymooning and is now requiring more insulin, then by the end of the illness, they may actually either leave honeymoon sooner or they may just be still at a higher insulin need as during the illness, the pancreatic beta cells were trying to assist Hmm. and there aren't very many of them left. So they were getting stressed out and can all can leave less than. Yeah. That makes Um, sense. So that's interesting. Um, Yeah. I I think that, so I think that the next step here, I mean, besides telling people like, look, it's going to happen, you know, if it's happening, it's flexibility is key. It's going to be a little more stressful, but only if you, I guess only if you're looking macro when you should be looking micro and then vice versa. Like you just talked about a lot, a number of ideas where you do want to pull back and see the big picture, but not about the fluctuations day to day. Those you kind of got to get on like a bull and ride them. You, you, you can't step back and have an existential conversation about whether or not you should be bull riding, you know? So, (laughs) (laughs) but, but the other stuff, are there illnesses? Is there growth? Um, You know, activity, those things are, those are big picture items. Mm -hmm. So now, okay. So now you've figured out a way to ride through this honeymoon. The thing that I see from people over and over again is that when it ends, you know, like when the honeymoon's over, they can't believe it. They can't pull the trigger. They can't ramp up. Think about it any way you want to, but they get stuck in the game and don't recognize that the game changed. Um, yeah. I think the big thing there is that, especially in honeymoon, the sensitivity to insulin makes people very wary of yes. using more. Right. Right. Because you can get burned right? Mm -hmm. By using more thinking you needed more because yesterday it clearly didn't work with this, you know, lunch that we provided and we're giving the same lunch today. So I'm going to be more aggressive, you know, gave a quarter unit yesterday. Today, I'm definitely giving a half a unit. And then on the back end, oh, the drop happens, right? Um, The good thing to know is that in, you know, the coming out of honeymoon, kind of moving out of that, that phase is that you will have, again, more consistency in more need Mm -hmm. for insulin. You won't have as much potential for those drops where you learned they typically happened. Even if it wasn't every day, you probably got a good idea of where things needed to be lower in dose or, you know, that won't necessarily be the case once you're out of honeymoon. I feel like you, I mean, when I tell people about it, I say you just kind of have to reset at that moment. That's when you go back to the setting basal insulin pro tip. You start over again, you get the basal straight, you reevaluate how long your pre-bolus time is, you reevaluate your meal insulin after you've reevaluated your basal insulin, and you just kind of start over. The, The truth is, is that I think that the transition from honeymoon to out of honeymoon is not actually much different sometimes than the transition from MDI to pumping in that it's just a, it's the same game, different players. Like, I don't know how to like, how to, how to think of it. It's like, you know, right church, wrong pew. I don't know what the, what the, the, the thing is like, you're doing the same thing, but the pieces have all just sort of adjusted a little bit and you have to just step back, take what you know about the thing you've been doing and reapply it to the new situation, right? Correct. And with pumping, you know that you've got a lot more precision Mm -hmm. that comes along with that. So if you've been 
doing things as precisely as possible with, let's say, just half units, right? And a basil that's given once or maybe twice a day. Now you can really address where insulin needs are heavier and are lighter through the course of a 24 hour day. Yeah. You can meet the need more precisely, thus the benefit of doing some basal testing again. Um, even if you're just doing it overnight, I mean, everybody wants to sleep. So if there's one time a day that you're going to do it, do it overnight. <laughs> Definitely get that part done. And get you, that part done. <laughs> and you steal a bunch of A1C and some just good feelings in general. If you're if you're thinking all 24 hours or just a train wreck, like maybe you could at least get eight or nine of them straight, you, you know, and it's, a, and it's right. a jumping in point for figuring out the rest of the day. I think that when you were saying something uh, a minute ago, this thought just jumped into my head and I'm going to put it here and I think it fits. I think no matter the situation, maybe I'm talking about just diabetes or life in general, um, but do something is often the answer. People, there's a fr people freeze wondering what the something should be. But if you're watching the same thing happen over and over and over again, if you just change the variables, the stressors on the situation, you might see something new that helps you understand a bigger picture or something different. And so, you know, if blood sugars are, I mean, I don't think it's a joke, but like online sometimes somebody will throw up a graph and be like, I don't know what's wrong with this. And I'll literally just type more insulin. Because put in I, some more and watch what happens and then go, oh, cause and effect. I've done But they want to know where, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. They want not just more. They're like, but where should I put that more insulin? <laughs> do something, though. Like, do right. something, right? Like, if you haven't been on vacation in 15 years, uh, take $5 a week and put it in an envelope. You know, do right. something. Try to change the situation a little bit. And I get that it's frightening. And I used to think, Jenny, I used to think that all these things that I saw around diabetes were so specific to diabetes, but I've been having some personal uh, things going on with my mom's health recently, which Jenny mm -hmm. knows about, I'm probably not going to yeah. tell all of you about right away. But but the point is, is that um, I recognize that the confusion and the the lack of knowing when to jump and feeling like you're overwhelmed and feeling like you don't understand what to do next, it's life, not diabetes. Right. And maybe it feels a little more dire in some situations than others. You know what I mean? Like standing in the store, trying to decide between two waxes for your car might not be as crazy as right. I wonder if I want to add three more basal units to my kid or something like that. But the truth is, is that that inaction, that's what keeps you where you're at. So if you're right. somewhere you don't want to be, do something. Right. You know. and, a, a, and an easier one to honestly do, let's say you are running high, you know, all day long and you're higher after meals, but you're still just stuck high in that scenario. And a, a safer thing is just add a little bit more basil, add just a little bit more basil, right? right? If instead in time periods where you're not actually eating, it doesn't look too bad. And then you've got these big excursions after you eat just about, you know, anything, even a microscopic eight grams of carb, maybe, and it goes rocketing up. Well, then you may be okay with basil and maybe the next place to add more. And again, not three units more, but maybe add a half a unit or adjust your insulin to carb ratio by one gram mm -hmm. to get a little bit more insulin around the times that you see the change that you don't want to see right. happening. Yeah. Uh, Arden's been getting up in the morning, going to school and her blood sugar has been rising this, this school year, like 30 points in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I tried to let the algorithm mess with it. Didn't work. Um, I tried making just some simple basal adjustments. Wasn't enough. And then finally I just said to her, I was like, when you leave the house from now on, will you just bolus three units, please? <laughs> and she's like, what? And I was like, just throw in three units, get in the car, go to school. I was like, because whatever's happening is happening enough. I believe it's happening. I trust that what I know is going to happen is going to happen. And she's using an algorithm. So if you make an uncovered bolus, it removes her basil immediately. So her basil is like 1.2 in the morning. So I figured it was about a unit and a half or so to fix the number or to get ahead of the number. And we got to cover the basil that's gone. 
So I was like, just three. And then we adjusted off of that. Ended up Mm -hmm. being a little too much. The next day we did a little less. The next day we had a better outcome. The next day she forgot to do it, you know, on the third Mm -hmm. day. And I was like, see, it happened again. Like, you know, like do this thing that made her trust to try to do it. And it becomes a little more important to her. Um, I just think it's another example of do something. Um, Right. You know, I've been saying online a lot to people lately. And you'll forgive me because I can't pronounce it um, in its in its origin language um, in Latin. But uh, I've been telling people lately, fortune favors the bold. Just try something. You, you know what I mean? Stand up, thump your chest, and go, I'm going to take a swing here. Let's see what happens. And then you get back to the stuff you hear in the earlier pro tips, you know? Uh, right. It, well, and I think there. the bigger thing, too, that you're you're bringing in is try something. Yeah. Right. But then analyze what that trying did. Right. Don't just try it and be like, wow, well, that clearly didn't work. <laughs> like still focus on it. Well, it didn't work. Your adjustment either left you too high or like, you know, happened for you. Uh, it caused it to be a little bit too low in the algorithm. Couldn't really save you from that extra insulin. Well, but now, you know, so you use that for that information and you move forward and you say, okay, tomorrow we're going to do it this way. I mean, that goes into you know, a lot of things in terms of kind of the exiting of the honeymoon, mm-hmm. it, it does. It's try this. It looks like consistently in the past week, he's needed more insulin. Right. Okay, great. You're trying to add more insulin. Is it enough? Is it getting to you to the place that you want to be? Insulin needs may actually continue to climb a little bit. It's not like a night and day, like yesterday we needed one unit and tomorrow we're going to need 10 units. Mm-hmm. That's not typically the exit of, of honeymoon, but over time, that lack of beta cells that is, that was helping you is going to show up very evidently in that you don't return to that minimal amount of insulin. Do you know what made me do this episode when Isabel told me that she thought it was necessary? It, It was that I had to get over that thing in my head that it's already in the podcast. Like, I was like, no, it's in there already. You just have to listen to it. And then I thought, well, it's in there, but it's in a different way. Because what we just talked about, about that, it really is the way when, um, when I was talking about, God, I don't even know what episode it was now. I I guess maybe that's a good point. It's hard to find them all. But, um, (laughs) but, but when I was talking about like, sometimes, you know, people's meal insulin, meal ratio, sometimes their, their insulin to carb ratio can be like spot on for a number of meals, but not work for a certain meal. And I always right. use that silly example. If you have meatloaf and mashed potatoes and green beans and you count the carbs and it says the carbs say, oh, this is five units. You make your pre-bolus, you spike, you end up correcting later with two units, which brings you down and you don't get low. Well, the next time you have the meatloaf and the mashed potatoes, you, need whatever, seven units. you, use, you use seven units, right? Like you see it happen and then you take the leap. You stop looking back at the meal ratio and going, no, that's not right. I counted the carbs. It's right. This is five units. Very similarly to the idea of you're using a pen that only goes up to a half of unit and you keep using it and then watching a low blood sugar happen and go, I'm I'm powerless. Well, you're not powerless. Like you just need to go get a syringe and do it a different way. And you're not at the mercy of your carb ratio just because it works five days a week, but not on Sunday when you have meatloaf. Like, right. So right. it's all kind of the same idea. Like, right. like I know it sounds trite. But well, and that's I I think it it brings in a good a good piece, too, in terms of, you know, multiple daily injections. And then we move to pumping and then we move to the fancy features of pumping. And then you might move to an algorithm driven pump. Right. All of these things take they take like evaluation. And, And, you know, a good example from somebody I worked with a while ago who had started using one of the algorithm driven pumps and she's like, this is fantastic. I love it. It's working so awesome, but it doesn't work on Friday night. And I was like, okay, well, what were you doing on Friday night that this doesn't work anymore for you? And she had this like whole thing figured out for her dinner Friday nights that she would go out to with her husband Mm -hmm. and on a conventional pump, she could use like you know, a temporary basil, she could use an extended bolus and she had it down pat. I was like, just go to manual mode in your pump 
and use it that way overnight. And Saturday morning, turn your algorithm back on. She's like, why didn't I think of that? I was like, oh, I don't know either, but I, I hope that it helps. And it it seemed to be much better then, yeah, right? We did that so, last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we went to a bar and Arden got nachos with cheesesteak on top of it and had French fries. And I crushed my fir the first bolus. I was like, I haven't been this excited about a bolus in a while. I was like, I was on top of it. And then I started seeing the fat rise and we hit it again. And I won. Like, I was over. And then I go upstairs to start working. And suddenly she jumps up. Her blood sugar jumps up. And I, I, I go downstairs. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I was like, what happened? I had some gummy bears she told me and i was like no 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 we can't put simple sugar on top of fat and protein i was like are you all out of your minds yes. <laughs> like, not without like significant i said arden if you were gonna eat gummy bears in this situation the pre bolus would have needed to be causing a fall before you put the bear the the bears in you, you know what right. i mean i was like and then that would have been okay but she just did the like my blood sugar is great thing threw in some insulin, waited a little while and ate it. And it was not nearly enough. We needed to be more drastic with it. And so I was like, so my text, my text said this, I'll bleep it out. It said, <laughs> then it said, then it said, open the loop, bowl is for you. <laughs> and let, and let the basil run. And let's yeah. go back to normal pumping for a minute and stop asking this algorithm to do something that it, it doesn't know how to do because know? it's not, it's not a learning algorithm. Unfortunately, it doesn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't react the way that we have the experience yeah, to yeah. say, I know this is what's going to happen. Please don't fiddle with the insulin that I put in yes. purpose. Right? <laughs> now is not the time to take the basil away algorithm. Right. Please. Yes. I got gummy bears <laughs> and cheesesteak nachos happening right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, Jenny, you know, there was, um, in the past, there was a moment when I, I used to worry and I'd think like, well, we've already said these things and people will find it. And now I realize that that's not how this is going to work, that these continuing conversations are incredibly important. I think maybe the conversational part of this episode and many episodes is more important even than the technical aspects of what was said inside of it. Um, right. You know, like if you listen to the pro tip series, and you had your brain or my brain or your experience and my experience, you could derive from the pro tip series how to manage a honeymoon. But for people who are in that situation, I think they need the information here. Right. You know what I in mean? one spot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I don't know if I was just like super hopeful or lazy. I'm not sure. But I used to think like, just go listen to the pro tip episodes. It explains the whole thing, <laughs> you know, and it really does. So I appreciate this. I think we're going to have to, you know, like I said, I'm, I want to do one for, uh, you know, female hormones, menstruation, that kind of thing yeah. specific the next time we record. And then from there, I'm going to say this here, Jenny, because it'll put us both on the hook. In, tw uh -oh. in 2022, um, Jenny and I are going to go back to certain pro tip episodes. We're going to re-listen to them on our time and then incorporate questions that I'm collecting on Facebook on how to supercharge those episodes. So they're going to kind that's of, great. some of them are going to get a part two kind of a situation. That's cool. What, that's what, that's how we will, you and I will spend our time seeing each other through the winter of 2022. <laughs> Sequels to certain episodes. <laughs> I'm thinking of them as director's cuts for, Oh, there you go. Yeah. For older people who, um, you remember the director's commentaries? Yes. Yeah. You know, what do you mean? You you flip the movie on and the audio goes away and you just hear the guy go, uh, in this shot, what I was thinking was that if the sun came in from the left. <laughs> <laughs> and we could, we could pan over here and listen to this music from this producer, you know, whatever. Do you see how Miss Selma Hayek's eyes are glistening? I do. <laughs> I told the DP, like, I don't know if you ever listened to them. They're pompous exchanges. Jenny and I will not do that. Uh, but we're going to go back and listen to what we've said because I've done it a couple of times. Like in episode 500, I went back to episode 11 that's bold with insulin and I listened to it and like talked over top of it. Like, so people listening in episode, I think it's 100. Oh my God, 100, okay. 500, sorry. Um, in episode 100, I just basically did a director's cut of that because I realized that when I said it, I was just saying it 
Like there was, and now I've lived all this time since then and had these interactions with people that maybe there'd be more to add to that. And I think that exists for the pro tip series. Like, and I'm excited. I'm sorry that you're going to start getting emails from me that say, please listen to this one before we talk again. But no, that's fine. No, it's not, not. a problem. You're a busy I like person. It. You're a busy well, person. Well, and I, I can do it during my workouts. Um, that's not usually, I just, that's my mental, like my moving like mental sort of like strategizing time is my exercise time. I am not like a sit in one space and like meditate. I'm a moving meditator, but I can meditate on the episodes so we can make them better for everybody else. Excellent. Well, I have a question. Uh, Then I'll let you go. How do you make out listening to your own voice? Does it freak you out? It's, I don't know. It's, I guess it's kind of weird to me because I, like I hear myself speak, you know, in your brain, yeah. like, but when you hear yourself, it sounds different, <laughs> I guess. I don't mind listening to myself, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think that I sound like what I sound like when I listen. No, no, no. I sound, so right now we're recording. I can hear you and me in my headphones. I mm-hmm. sound different in my headphones than I sound on the recording. And if I'm just speaking out into the world, I don't think I sound like the person on the podcast at all, but people think I do. But to, in my right. ear, it doesn't sound the same. Although, and do you ever get on? Do you ever do you ever say anything and hear yourself and go, "Oh, Jenny, you should not have said it. You should have said it like this." Do you ever correct yourself? I do, yeah. absolutely. And, and a lot of the ones that I listen to, I'm like, "Oh, this would have been a better explanation, or I could have put this in as an example, and that would have been better." So maybe we, yes, I think it's great to sort of rethink them because yep. then we can. And, extra. Well, and I agree that there's there's just always going to be other stuff to say. And as we move forward into 2022 and beyond, more people are going to be using algorithms. And there's going to be a whole new layer of understanding for diabetes. There's going to be things that you and I don't have an experience yet that that through these experiences over and over again of using this technology are going to come out. I don't see an end to this podcast. I used to think it was finite. And now I think somebody's going to need to you know, make up a cure for this podcast not to be necessary. So, well, that's what I was going to say. I don't think until there's honestly a true, like, you don't have to use any technology or anything. You just go in and get your blood work done and make sure your doctor's like, yep, you still look great. It's all perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, you know, the information that people need, especially with life changing and everything. Right. I think it's purposeful. So yeah, I do too. I appreciate you doing cool. this with me. It's sort yes. of the end of the year. So let me thank you for yes. giving your time so greatly to the podcast. A huge thanks to Jennifer Smith, my good friend, for being on this episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Actually, Jenny does the podcast for fun. But she also does this stuff for a living. So if you'd like to hire her, you can at integrateddiabetes.com. After the music, I'll give you some of Jenny's specifics. Don't forget the Facebook page for the podcast, Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes. 20,000 people strong, just like you, looking for advice, community, and support from people who understand. Please take advantage of it. It's absolutely free and really valuable. My friend Jenny Smith has had type 1 diabetes for over 33 years. She holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin. She's a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring systems. She is also on every one of the Diabetes Pro Tip and Defining Diabetes episodes. You can find those episodes in your podcast player or at juiceboxpodcast.com. I actually think there's a list on the Facebook page, too, up in the announcements section. Is that what they're calling it now? They used to call it. Hold on a second. I'll find out for you, and then I'm going to tell you about the other stuff that you need to know. Yeah, so if you're on the private Facebook group, they call it Featured now. used to be Announcements. Now it's Featured. So if you go to the Featured section, you'll find lists of the pro tips, how to start listening to the podcast, um, defining diabetes, all kinds of stuff that you need. Actually, there's lists of Ask Scott and Jenny episodes here, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, you should check it out. 
Oh, look at there's so much to choose from. Special episodes, After Dark, How We Eat. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with this. But by the way, it's not boring. I'm just trying to fill you in. Are you arguing with me? Am I arguing with nobody? Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, I wanted to tell you about the diabetes pro tips. So they began back on episode 210 with an episode called Newly Diagnosed or Starting Over. I'm going to try to list them for you pretty quickly. Episode 211, all about MDI. Episode 212, all about insulin. Episode 217, pre-bolus. Episode 218, temp basal. 219, insulin pumping. 224, mastering a CGM. 225, bump and nudge. 226, the perfect bolus. 231, variables. 237, setting basal insulin. 256, exercise. 263, fat and protein. 287, illness, injury, and surgery. 301, glucagon and low BGs. 307, emergency room protocols. 311, long-term health. 350, bump and nudge part two. 364, pregnancy. 371, explaining type one. That's for other people. Like, so you can share it with like a family member, a loved one who needs to understand type one. 449, postpartum. 470, weight loss. And this episode, 608. And there's going to be more. In fact, there'll be another one next month on female hormones. Thank you so much for listening. If this is your first episode, please subscribe or follow in an audio app of your choosing. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere you get audio. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.